Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Senhoras e senhores, boa noite. I'm Duila de Mello, Vice Provost for Global Strategies and Professor of Physics at the Catholic University of America, and I will be the Master of Ceremonies tonight. Welcome to an evening of Brazilian classical music, an evening when dreams come true. Dreams of this magnitude can only come true when people dream together. And that's what happened. People from the Oliveira Lima Library, from the Embassy of Brazil, from the Institute for Latin American and Iberian Studies, and from the Rome School of Music, Drum and Art at the Catholic University of America made this dream come true. The Oliveira Lima Library holds a collection of over 60,000 items from the 16th century to the mid 20th century on topics such as history, politics, journalism, literature, laws, slavery, religion, art, and culture. The collection contains books, speeches, official decrees, sermons, poems, plays, most related to Brazil and Portugal. The library also houses the world's largest collection of pamphlets that dates from the period of the independence of Brazil. The Oliveira Lima Library is honored to co-host this memorable event in partnership with the Embassy of Brazil in this very special year. The year Brazil is celebrating the bicentennial of independence. And let me tell you one secret. You ready? The Oliveira Lima Library has a magic door. When you enter the library, you are immediately transported to Brazil, to its rich history and culture. Tonight, Brazilian classical music will transport us to Brazil. Enjoy the journey, enjoy an evening of Brazilian classical music. I will now call the 15th president of the Catholic University of America, President John Garvey. Thank you all for joining us. On the occasion of the dedication of the Oliveira Lima li Library, Manuela de Oliveira Lima shared these words, the Ibero-American Library is not destined to be a necropolis of old books, uh, scarce and valuable. It'll be in close contact with the cultural centers of Latin America. The Catholic University of America, in dedicating the library, gives new proof of its truly Catholic or universal spirit. As the 15th president of Catholic University, I've been proud to be part of the promotion of this treasure, one that's important to our university and the nation and the world. It's made multiple transatlantic journeys before finding its permanent home here in DC. How did that happen? How did this, one of the foremost collections of Braziliana in the world, come to find a home at Catholic University? When he was on assignment in Washington from 1886 to 1889, Oliver Lima became familiar with the university and was impressed by Cardinal James Gibbons, the Archbishop of Baltimore and the Chancellor of our university a supporter of the university's mission to combine faith and reason in education, Oliveira Lima wanted to be part of its future. <clears throat> in that spirit, he and Flora decided in 1916 to donate this exceptional collection to the university. Because of the Great War, it took a number of years to move it from London to its home on our campus. Lima served as the curator of the library and from 1923 until his death in 1928 was a professor of international law. The library was dedicated in 1924 and in two years we will celebrate its, its centennial. The Catholic University of America is honored to have been the steward of this priceless collection for the past century. It's an embodiment of the university's focus on research and scholarship and culture across continents and we're delighted to share it through music with you tonight. I want to offer my sincere thanks to the Embassy of Brazil, which provided funding for tonight's concert, 
the university is honored to partner in this celebration of the bicentennial of Brazil's independence. We're grateful to everyone who made the evening possible, including all of you in the audience. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for those nice words, President Garvey. Before I proceed with the program, I would like to once again show our gratitude to everyone from the Brazilian Embassy for their enthusiasm in collaborating in this event with us. I will now call His Excellency Nestor Forster, Ambassador of the Federative Republic of Brazil to the United States of America. Senhoras e senhores, amigos do Brasil, boa noite. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good evening to all of you. I'm glad that so many of you could join us for this celebration of the bicentennial of Brazilian independence. President Garvey, thank you for your kind words and enthusiasm. Thanks to Dr. Duílio de Mello, administrator of the Oliveira Lima Library, which is the greatest Brazilian cultural treasure in the United States. We are here at the Strathmore this evening to pay tribute to the birth of Brazil as a nation in 1822. From the outset, the United States has always been by our side. Therefore, it's only fitting that when we celebrate our independence, we also celebrate our friendship with the American people. From a Portuguese colony, Brazil emerged over centuries through the blending of European, indigenous, African, and then Asian and Middle Eastern influences. This rich heritage formed our identity as a nation. It was from Portugal that Brazil inherited the foundations of its public institutions, and 1808 marked a turning point. In that year, King João VI fled Napoleon's armies to establish his royal court in Rio de Janeiro. Almost overnight, Brazil went from a colony to the seat of the Portuguese Empire. Brazil was now aware of its importance, and an independence movement soon began to take shape. On the side of Brazil was a Portuguese prince who became Brazil's first ruler, Pedro I. Several great leaders joined the young monarch to embrace the cause of independence. Once, uh, one such figure was José Bonifácio, known as the patriarch of Brazilian independence. Ever since, Brazilians have carried on their legacy, which we continue to uphold. A sense of duty calls to mind the words of the great Irish statesman Edmund Burke, the homeland is a partnership not only between those who are living, but between those who are living, those who are dead, and those who are to be born. Brazilian independence was not so much a victory of the sword, but a feat of dialogue and diplomacy. Values that have guided Brazil, a peace-loving nation, throughout its history. Our first envoy to Washington, José Silvestre Rebelo, set out to obtain official U.S. recognition of Brazil's independence. In 1824, he met with President James Monroe and Secretary of State John Quincy Adams. Both statesmen resolved to lend U.S. support to the new empire of Brazil. Through this momentous decision, the U.S. became one of, the, of Brazil's first friends in the Concert of Nations. This early friendship developed into a forward-looking partnership based on the shared values of democracy and freedom, the rule of law, and respect for human rights. In celebration of the Brazilian independence and of our ties of friendship and cooperation with the United States, we bring to you tonight this performance of Brazilian symphonic music. We hope you all enjoy it. Thank you very much. Obrigada, Embaixador. Thank you very, very much, Ambassador. 
We are now ready to start our journey to Brazil. Please join me in welcoming the concert mistress, Yang Kang, who will be tuning the orchestra, followed by Faye Foster, candidate in the Doctoral of Musical Arts in Orchestral Conducting of the Catholic University of America. Enjoy an evening of Brazilian classical music. Thank you very much.